We're never gonna stop. See that? We're never gonna stop. We're never gonna stop. We are running, chasing after all that you are. Cause we are running. Every stride is taken in faith. Every step compelled by your grace. We're taking up the cross no matter what the cost. We're giving all to go your way. We're never gonna stop. We're never gonna stop. Here we go. Cause we are running. Chasing after all that you are. Cause we are running You can fall that you want You can fall that we want We're running Chasing after all that you want Cause we are running You can fall that you want You can fall that you want Oh, 
God be exalted, God be exalted in everything. We live for your glory, live for your glory. God be exalted. God be exalted, God be exalted in everything. We live for your glory, live for your glory. I sing that. God, God be exalted, God be exalted in everything. We live for your glory, live for your glory. Lord of endless life, Lord of endless life, let your glory shine forever for all the Sing your prayer. Hope of every heart. Let your name be lifted higher. Let all our hearts, let all our hearts, we sing your prayer. God be, God be exalted. God be exalted in every prayer. Hey, hey, welcome to church. Come on, give the Lord a shout right now, would you? Hey, listen, it's so good to see you. We're so, you know what? If you're visiting for the first time, it's going to be okay. And listen, if, if you make it through the day, then man, God's got something bigger for your life. Is that all right? Hey, we just want to welcome you. If you're here for the first time, we're so grateful that you're here. If you're online watching, we just believe that right there in your home where you're at, that God's going to do some big things. And I want to encourage you today that as you... Uh, as we continue in praise and worship, I want I want to ask you to lift your voice. I want to ask you to sing sing loud enough so that you can hear yourself. Because let me tell you something: when you start speaking in such a way that you can hear your own self rejoicing, then God's going to do something powerful. I believe you're going to I believe you're going to have a powerful time with us today. So let's continue as we worship the Lord. God bless you. Sand of heaven, God's own son, to put 
Now I live for 
the one who has called me by name, who has risen and alive in me. All together now. I am forgiven at the foot of the cross. I am accepted by the power of your blood. My every step is washed away. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that we could come into this place. Our sins have been washed away. We've been forgiven. We've been accepted because of your love. It's not nothing that we can do. It's not nothing that we have done, but it's because of your grace and your love and your mercy towards us. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for giving your life that we might have life, that you gave of yourself, that you loved on us when nobody else loved us. You believed in us when nobody else believed in us. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we're forgiven. Come on, let's sing that. I am forgiven at 
Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to come into the house of the Lord with other believers. We thank you, Lord, that we've come into this place to focus on you, not to worry about what the week has or what happened last week, but, Lord, to come and hear from heaven. What is our assignment for the week? Father, what would you have us to do this week? Who would you have us to love on this week? And I just pray, Lord, that today that lives will be changed. I pray that the Spirit of God would come and touch and move in the hearts of each and every person that is in this room, but also each and every person that is watching online. We thank you, Lord, that today it's going to be an amazing day. We thank you, Lord, how, how you have blessed us here at the Rock Church. But, Lord, I don't pray just for us. I pray for all the churches here in the valley and around the world that are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, for our, our Catholic brothers and sisters, our Baptists, our Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Foursquare, Pentecostals, Assemblies of God. We thank you for great churches that are in this valley, like Southwest, Destiny, Champion Life, there's a Springs, there's a Chapel, JPL, Cornerstone Church, Grace Church. Bless them, Lord, as you would bless us. Because, Lord, we don't think that we're better. We don't think that we have the goods. But, Lord, we know that we have a specific assignment. And we all together have one goal. And that's to make Jesus famous and Jesus exalted. So, Lord, I pray that today that that would be accomplished in this valley. Thank you, Lord. We give you all praise and all glory and all honor. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said... Amen. You guys can have a seat. As you have a seat, we're just going to get right into the Word of God. I'm so excited to be back in the pulpit. We, we're gone two weeks in Australia, and I was down there ministering and skateboarding, and, and, and uh, I had the opportunity to do a lot. But when we got back for two weeks, I uh, uh, sick as a dog, and then last week I had a guest speaker. So it's so good to be in the pulpit on a Sunday morning. I, was, I spoke on Wednesday night. We had a great time. But to be back in the pulpit, so uh, just kind of just to review of where we've been going and what we've been talking about since the beginning of the year as God began to speak to us as a church. God began to place it on my heart about being healthy as a church, being healthy as a Christian, being healthy as a, as a follower of Jesus Christ. And what did that entail? We saw that, that God says that as he's chosen us, he's called us that we would bear fruit and that our fruit would remain. God wants us to bear fruit. God wants us to be productive as a Christian. And I think many times Christians hold on to the fruit instead of releasing it. But God has called us to... Uh, uh, distribute the goodness, distribute the fruit, distribute what has been given to us that others might receive that. And over, uh, over the last few months we've been talking about that. We saw how God wants us to walk according to the Spirit of God and not walk according to the flesh. The flesh will get us in, in trouble, but if we walk according to the Spirit of God, it brings forth life and peace. We saw in Galatians in the fifth chapter, if you have your Bible there, uh, uh, the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit. This is what the fruit that God wants us to develop as Christians, as believers. It's the fruit of the Spirit of God. Now, as we see here, the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says that it's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's long-suffering, it's kindness, it's goodness, it's faithfulness, it's gentleness, it's self-control. Against such there is no law. And so as we read this, it doesn't mean that those are all individual fruits. It means it's one fruit with many characteristics. These are the very characteristics, the nature and the attributes of God. God is love. God is joy. God is peace. God is long-suffering. God shows us kindness. He shows us goodness. He's faithful to us. He's gentleness. And he has self-control. That's what God wants us as believers to operate in. And over the last few weeks, we were talking about the love of God because really, this church, since it started uh, going on eight years, 
our whole uh, theme of what we're all about, the, the, if, you would, if you would have it, the, uh, the mission statement is to love people to life. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. He loved us to life. He didn't point fingers. He didn't condemn us. He didn't tell us how bad we were. He just hung on the cross. He says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. And as a church, I really believe with all my heart, if we could get that as a church, if we could get, capture that as believers, I'm telling you, lives are going to be changed all around us because a lot of times people are pushed away from the church. They're push, pushed away from God because they think that God is up in heaven with a big old two by four ready to pop them over the head. But God loves us so much, believes in us when we didn't believe in ourselves. He, 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 he lifted us up when we were in, the, in our sin and said, I love you. Come on this journey. I want you to enjoy life, the life abundantly that I have for you. That's the way uh, that God has. And we, we've been talking about love. We've been talking about the love of God, how much God loves us. We've been talking about how, how we are called to, to love others. We've been uh, taking a look at um, last week as our guest speaker was here on Wednesday night. We talked about we talked about instead of just looking at people that we see on the inside, we see the hurts, we see the pains, instead of judging them because of what we see, a uh, uh, look on the outside, but we would see as Jesus would see. And we begin to look at this uh, about the love of God. And we could uh, preach on the love of God and his goodness, his mercy. The Bible says that to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, to love your neighbor as yourself. Basically two things that God says. He wants us to love him and love people. We could speak on that until Jesus comes back. But we're going to continue on because there's other attributes that God wants us to display in our life. The other fruits of the Spirit that he wants us not just to walk in love because we can walk in love. But what's next? The Bible says love, joy, being happy, being excited about life, having enjoyment, having that bliss, having that pleasure in life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and then it's joy. I don't know about you, but I know many Christians, they don't have joy in their life. I know a lot of Christians that if you looked at their face, it would look like they were sucking on sour lemons all day long. And you're coming up and you say, you are a Christian. You are a believer. You, you, you really want me to think that, that you're excited about life when you look like this? But God says it's the fruit of the Spirit is love and it's joy. It's that happiness. Nehemiah 8.10 says, it's the joy of the Lord that gives me strength. If you don't have joy in your life, how are you going to have the strength to, to, to live out the day? How are you going to have the strength to, to, to fight the good fight of faith? How are you going to have the strength to live the life that God wants you to live? And, and, and the joy that, that, that you do not have, it's probably because of situations that happen in your life throughout the day. Maybe it's a situation that happened years ago. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe somebody physically abused you. Maybe somebody uh, lied about you. Or maybe, maybe it's something that happened in your life. Uh, you, you, you lost the, the home and there's certain circumstances. And, and, and your marriage is, is a mess. And your kids aren't serving God. And, and, and you lost your job. And you don't know what life has to offer. And all of a sudden, you've lost the joy because of circumstances in your life. Maybe... It's because you've lost that strength. It's the joy of the Lord that gives us that strength. You see, when my boys were little, you know, just like any other kid that is growing up, they always get to the place sometimes where they get cranky. They get angry. They don't like this toy. Uh, they don't want to go to bed. And do I have to eat these vegetables? And they, they always uh, seem to get to a place when, when they don't have enough sleep and they're tired that they get all cranky. And, and uh, you know, in our household, we, would, we didn't want that to happen. We didn't, weren't going to allow it to take place because in all reality, we are the parents, they're the kids. They're not, they're not going to tell us what to do. That's what sometimes, that's another message, but in all reality, parents, you need to parent your kids. So, so 
Whenever they had an attitude, whenever they were cranky, whenever they were, uh, uh, seemed like there was no joy, and we wanted joy in the household, we remembered this verse. Remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we thought to ourselves, how can we get it to them that they just break down and realize that, wow, the thing that they were troubled about is no longer a problem. The thing that they were worried about is no longer something to be worried about. So Pastor Donna and I, we, we used to sing this song to them until they broke through and became happy. And we would kind of lift our arms up. We had these hand motions that the, the joy, and we would go, the, and we would sing out the, and we'd lift up our hands, kind of like at the, uh, at the fair uh, when you would go and you'd go on a ride and go click, 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 click. And when it hit the top, it'd go, click, and then release to the ride. And that's what we did. We said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And then we'd end up on the other side. And they'd be like looking at us. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And we would do that until they broke down, had a little smirk, a little smile. And then they'd ah, and then they'd like it would be okay. But, but we knew that we had to break through. Some of us, and I'm saying us, we get to that place where circumstances in our life cause us to get frustrated in life and the fruit of the spirit that we should be walking in in joy and you know Christians should be the happiest people on earth but sometimes they're the lousiest witnesses for the things of God and you know what if you look like that if you act like that if your attitude is like that I don't want to be a Christian and so we have to sometimes break through see your happiness in life shouldn't be based on your circumstances. Shouldn't be based on whether you have a job or don't have a job. And whether you have money in the bank or you don't have money in the bank. Whether you have a retirement program or you don't have a retirement program. Or whether uh, you were abused as a child or nobody liked you or you were picked on and you were bullied. And, and, or, 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 or whatever the circumstance may be. Your life happiness should not be based on the circumstances, but your happiness in life should be based on the fact that you have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and His name is Jesus. That if you just remember, you know what? Everything in life may seem to be going to hell. But I know there's a God in heaven that loves me. I know there's a God in heaven that believes in me. I know there's a God in heaven that, that has his best intentions in mind for my life. And all things work for good to the glory of God, to those that serve him and love him. And I'm not going to allow my circumstances to hold me back. The Bible says in James in the first chapter, it says, my brethren. When it says my brethren, it means as believers, as Christians. Count it all joy. Count it all happiness. Count it all excitement. Count it all as pleasure when you fall into various trials. When crummy stuff happens in your life, the Bible says count it all joy. When somebody offends you, count it all joy. When you wake up and you're excited about work and they're saying we're going to have to lay off some people and you're the first one laid off. Count it all joy. Be happy about it. Pastor, it's, it's, it's so hard. Exactly. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's the very thing that, that, that allows us to continue on in life. Because if not, you're going to spiral downhill. And life is going to be miserable for you. I, 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 I used to say all the time. I'm allergic to negative people. I don't like that. If, uh, if I start scratching around you, you know what, then maybe something's wrong. And you know what, I, I, recently I've been kind of itching. So, so don't get close to me because you might be thinking that I'm scratching because of you. But, but in all reality, the, God wants us to be happy. Remember that song? The don't worry. I'll be happy. I don't worry. Be happy now. Woo. Man, you guys. <laughs> oh, well. Doodle-doo. 
There was a research that these psychologists were doing, and I read about this, that, that they wanted to research optimistic people and pessimistic people. What's an optimist? Optimist is somebody that just believes the best that, okay, wow, you know, this, it started raining and I was going to do this today, but oh, well, you know what? I know it's all for good because we needed the rain and the grass is going to be greener. Oh, man, I came out into the parking lot. My, I have a flat tire. But you know what? It's better that I have a flat tire now because now I realize that my tire could have popped on the freeway. And, oh, it's going to be all right. Oh, man, this swimming pool is empty. Oh, well, I'm a skateboarder. I could skate in the pool. Hey, bud, this <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no worries. Be happy. But a pessimist is someone that says, oh, man, life sucks. This is bad. Everything is bad. I came to church. I didn't get the seat that I wanted. <laughs> they didn't sing the songs that I, that, that I like. <laughs> or I went to get coffee and, you know, uh, uh, they didn't have the sugar that I wanted. Or I, I got the last cup and I got some ground in the coffee. And, man, I wanted to park there. You know what? And they're just always negative about everything in life. So they did this research with some children. And they got two rooms. And they had one room packed with toys, filled with toys. It's like they went to Toys R Us and just packed it with electronic gadgets and everything they could, board games and anything, balls and, and everything, and they put a, a little boy in that room. And then they had another room, and they, they had that room full of manure. And they put a little boy in that room. 30 minutes goes by. They looked into the one room with all the toys, and they looked, and the boy was just sitting there. He was mad. He was angry. I, I don't like these toys. You know what? The toys at my house are, are better. This ball, I don't like the color of this ball. And, and it doesn't bounce right. And, you know, this, this board game, you know what? It has too many pieces. There's too many instructions and this and that. And all of a sudden, he's just complaining about a room full of toys. And they're like, what's up with this kid? And then they remembered that they had the other room with the with all the manure, and they run into that other room, and they, and, and they looked at the little boy, and he's all excited, and he's throwing this manu manure in the air, and he was all dirty, he's getting in his face, he's getting in his hair, his, his clothes were all dirty, he's saying, yippee, yippee, and they're going, what's up? Why are you so happy? And he said, with all this manure here, there must be a pony somewhere. <laughs> he took a bad situation in life. And he says, there has to be something good. And he was happy about it. How many of us take a situation and it's, we just get so angry at life. We think that God is against us. We think the world is against us. And instead of taking all that manure and say, you know what? All that manure or all that crap, if I could say, has been thrown at me. There must be something good around here. Instead of always looking at the negative and always looking at the bad and always uh, uh, wanting to be sad. And, you know, David says, you know what? That, uh, they said, let us be happy. Let us rejoice. Let's be excited when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Every time you come to the house of God, you should be happy. You should be excited. You should say, you know what? I'm going to leave all that manure behind because I know that God has something great that he wants to do in my life. There's a story in the Bible in, in 2 Samuel. King David, David is the one that slayed the giant, remember? Um, he became king, and what happened, one of his first things that he wanted to do is he wanted to get back the Ark of the Covenant. Now, for some of you that are new as Christians and you don't know what that is, the Ark of the Covenant has nothing to do with Noah's Ark, with the big boat. 
But the Ark of the Covenant is where, where God's Ten Commandments, remember Moses went on the mount. They were in a, in a, they were in a box and they were in a cabinet. And, and that cabinet was really represented the presence of God. And what happened was during one of the wars like they are, have in the Bible, the Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant because they knew it was the very presence of God. They knew because of that Ark of the Covenant that Jerusalem and, and, and God's people were always succeeding. So they said, we're going to take this away from them. So they no longer succeed. So it was taken away for about 20 years. And David says, you know what, we're going to go get back the Ark of the Covenant. And so that they did as they went and they, they, they got the Ark of the Covenant. And they, would, they would carry it kind of like on, on, uh, on the shoulders of uh, uh, four men. And they would carry it. And it would be this big old box that had the Ten Commandments on the tablets in it. As they were coming along, they were walking they, the, it had uh, bounced off and it was ready to fall. And at that time, there was only a, a, a certain people were able to touch or even hold or to move it. And that was the priests and the Levites. It was about to fall and somebody reached their hands. And they weren't a priest. They weren't a Levite. They went to touch it. And all of a sudden, they died. David's all, hey, I don't, this is scary stuff. Don't be messing with God. Let's leave it here at the house of a man by the name of Obed-Eden. The Bible says that when they left the Ark of the Covenant there, that the house of Obed-Eden was blessed for three months. It was like the presence of God was there and great things were happening because of the Ark of the Covenant. David heard about this and he said, you know what, we need to make sure we get it back to Jerusalem. He, he got over the fear of, of, of dying. Let's just make sure that we do it according to God's way. So they... Go back and they get the Ark of the Covenant and they begin to go into Jerusalem. And the Bible says in 2 Samuel, the 6th chapter, verse 14, it says, Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. What is that? He was in his chonies. He was dancing so much. He was sweaty. He was just, basically, he, 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 he was in his chonies, the Bible said. And he was like dancing. How many of you remember, how many of you were in church in the, uh, in the what was it, the early 80s? Early 80s. None of, you, none of you were in church in the early 80s? There used to be a song that says, when the spirit of the Lord comes on my heart, I will dance like David danced, dun, dun, dun. Anybody remember that? Okay, now you guys remember. And then the church would go, I will dance, I will dance. And they would throw that holy hip-hop jig. That's where the song came from. Because David came and he was so excited. He was so happy about what was taking place. And he's dancing. He was twirling. The Bible said he was, he was just dancing and excited. He says, you know what? Wow, I'm excited because now we have the presence of God coming back to Jerusalem. His wife, Michael, who was Saul, the old king's daughter. Remember the Bible? Remember when he slayed the giant? He got Saul's daughter and uh, became his wife. She was so disgusted with him because he was so happy. But not only because he was so happy, but because he was dancing. He was, he was, the Bible says, she said that, you know what, you are so undignified. And he said, he goes, I will be even more undignified than this. Because of the happiness, because of the joy, because of the excitement that is in my life. I don't care what people say. I don't care what people think. I don't care if they see me. I'm going to dance because I'm happy that I have life and life eternal. And so he says, I don't care if I'm indignified. You know, there's so many people in the church today that we've become dignified. I'm going to come into church. I'm going to act proper. I'm not going to sing too loud. I might maybe raise my hands here, but I'm not going to lift them up to here. And 
If I need to get on my knee, I'm not going to get on my knees even though my heart is kneeled to God. But I really feel that on Wednesday night I loved it because there was some people that came to the altar. And you know what? This altar is here for you. Who cares what people think? We are coming to church because we want to be in the presence of God. And we want to feel the presence of God. And, and, and as long as that makes us happy, let us not just be dignified. And probably, I mean, if you know it's me, you know, as a, as a pastor, you know, I'm I, you know, I may wear T-shirts and sneakers and whatever, but my heart longs for God. You may think, oh, this guy is undignified. He should have his nice slacks and his tie, and you know, he needs to have the nice shoes, not some slip-on sneakers or. So David comes along and he just dancing before the Lord. Ecclesiastes says there's a time to weep, there's a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. I think sometimes we come to church and we allow the worship team to entertain us. Hopefully they do the right job, and hopefully they don't mess up. And if we like the song, we'll sing. And I love when Pastor David came up and he says, you know what, sing, just sing it up so you can hear yourself. Amen. Maybe clap. Even if you clap off beat, clap. Even if you don't have a great voice, sing. This is not about you. This is about us getting our hearts prepared for God. You know, maybe you like to tap your foot. Maybe you have a little bit more rhythm. Go side to side. Remember Hitch? Maybe a little nod. Nod of the head. Maybe if you're like Al, you throw in a little carpet. You know, before our first service, we like to pray. We pray as, a, as a, the staff. And I said, you know, guys, I want you guys to get your groove on. As the leadership goes, so goes the church. And, you know, I don't want you to be so dignified and so proper. That's the way. Whatever. That's the way you dance. If it's just tapping your foot, maybe you're Hispanic in here and you'd like to. <laughs> Throw the little grito in there. But the thing is, is I think sometimes we need to get out of ourselves. David was so excited to bring back the presence of God. And he was just dancing. This week we, we did something as a church and we put something together. What I want all of you to do, I want you to stand up to your feet. We're going to do something today that we may be a little undignified. We may feel a little uncomfortable. But I want you to get out of yourself. If you come to church and you don't clap, maybe you want to clap. Maybe if you come and you don't sing, maybe you want to just sing. Maybe it's a, a nod of the head. But we put something together, and I, I hope it gets us out of the place because, you know, God has not called us to be, uh, to be sad. God has called us to be happy. God has not called us to come into this place as we come into church, and our circumstances are so bad, our circumstances are so hard that we're not going to be happy. God has called us to be happy. God has called us to have the joy of the Lord in our life. So... If you want to clap, 
if you want to dance, if you want to nod your head, if you want to move your feet from side to side, uh, let's just... Let's just get to that place of saying, you know what, God, I'm going to let you be you. You know, I, one of the things that makes me happy is being in church, being with other believers. And I just love going around this campus and going in the children's room and seeing the lobby and coming into the sanctuary. And it's just one of those things that makes me happy. Gives me excited. Gives me strength to go another day. Gives me strength to preach another message. Gives me strength to stand up for righteousness. So what I want you to do is I want to I want you to take a look at this, and feel free just to have fun.
Now that's, you know what? Didn't that just make you feel happy? I will be undignified more than this, Lord, because I'm excited about you. You guys can have a seat. Nothing. He's so happy. He wants to stay on the stage. But I don't know about you, but that just, it just makes me happy. God wants us to be happy Christians. God doesn't want us to be boring Christians. God doesn't want us to be stuffed up Christians. There's a part in that song that says, bring me down. Can't nothing. No situation that I've gone through is going to bring me down. No relationship that I had is going to bring me down. No upset that I've ever had in my life is going to bring me down. It says, can't bring me down. Bring me down. No levels. My level's too high. You know, I, I just have so much of, of God on the inside of me that, you know, I'm not going to allow these situations. You know, I, I have too much uh, knowledge of, of God, and I know that God won't fail me. I know that God won't leave me, and that's why I'm happy. I'm, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I just thank God that, that I have Him in my life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 149, Verses 1 through 4 says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Today we had a new song, and you know what? It was, it was awesome. It kind of sounded like a hymn. It was, it was a beautiful song. And his praise in the assembly of the saints. That's in church. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful. Let them be happy in their king. We should be the most happiest people on the planet because, you know what, we don't serve a God that is dead. We serve a God that is alive, and his name is Jesus. And let them praise his name with dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and the heart. And I love this part. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. When they sing to him, when they play instruments to him, when they rejoice in their king, and when they dance. The Lord takes pleasure in his people, and he will beautify the humble with salvation. God rejoices. In the fact that you're happy. You know, I, I, the Bible tells us in, in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, verse 16, it says, rejoice, be happy, not when things are just going for you. Be happy when you got a big bonus at work. Or be happy when your kids are obeying you. Be happy when things are going perfect and you feel good. Be happy always. Always. I'm not, I'm not saying that we're never going to uh, feel like we want to get into that funk. That we want to be depressed. That we want to get under the covers and, and, and pull the covers over our head and just be in the dark because uh, uh, we're, we're having a, a pity party. But God says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. God, all things work for good to those who love the Lord and call to go to your purpose. God, I don't know why my, my father wasn't there in my childhood. But God, I rejoice now because now I know that he's saved. And now I know that he goes to church. And now I know he has a relationship with you. But God, I thank you, Lord. I don't know why he was a, an alcoholic, but Lord, I'm grateful that over 35 years now he's been sober. God, I don't know why my parents had to divorce. I don't know why this happened to me. I don't know why that happened, but God, I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be happy. Because God, you know the bigger picture. You know the greater work. And everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's the will of God for your life that you be happy. 
in Acts in the 16th chapter, and we're going to close with this verse. Acts in the 16th chapter, the Apostle Paul, the, the very one that wrote Galatians, when he says the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. He's going through a situation in Acts in the 16th chapter. Him and Silas, they're preaching the gospel. They're doing what God called them to do. And then there are some people that didn't like what was taking place. And they, they accused them of, of blasphemy. And they, they beat them up. And they, they whipped them. And then they threw them into prison. But they didn't only throw them into the regular prison. They threw them into the inner prison. And they put chains on their hands and on their feet. And it wasn't at the 5 o'clock hour. It wasn't at the 7 o'clock hour. It wasn't at the 10 o'clock hour. They'd been in there for hours. If I would have been Paul, I would have said, God, you told me to preach the gospel. I thought you were going to go with me, God. I thought you were going to be on my side, God. And he could have been complaining. But the Bible says, but at the midnight hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. You see, in your walk with God, you're going to go through stuff. There's going to be a lot of manure. Some ha may have more manure, but you know what? They may be a bigger pony. They may be Clydesdales for some of you. But the Bible says they were singing, praying singing hymns to God. Why? Because they were happy. Because they knew that this was just temporary. They knew that if they were happy about what was taking place, that it was going to give them the strength to endure. And the Bible says that the prisoners were listening to them. The Bible says that we are epistles written on the hearts of and that people see our lives. And what do they see? Do they see us with the spirit of, uh, uh, that the, the fruit of the spirit of, of love operating out of us? Do they see the spirit of joy operating out of us? What are they listening to? What are they seeing? My heart's desire is, Lord, as we build this church, I pray, God, that, that it would be a church of love. That when people walk through those doors, that they would not feel condemned. That they would not feel that people are pointing fingers at them. That they would not feel uh, 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 uncomfortable. That as we look, as we talked about on Wednesday night, that, that, that we don't just look on the outside, but we would see in the spirit what's going on on the inside of their hearts. And have compassion for them, just like somebody had compassion for us. And, Lord, would we be a church of joy, that that joy would be contagious, that, that, that people would want to come to this place because of the liberty and the freedom and the joy that is in this place. Next week we're going to continue. We're going to continue talking about joy because I don't want to be a Christian. And I talk about this for myself. I don't want to be a Christian that looks like this. But I want to be a Christian that displays the goodness of God. Today we're, uh, we're going to do something a little different today with our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, raise your hands and the ushers will put one in your hand. As you're filling out that information, you know, if it's for credit, fill it out all the way. If you're writing a check, write out to the rock. If you're giving by cash... You could just drop in the cash in the offering bucket or if you want a tax deductible receipt at the end of the year. But I'm saying this kind of quickly because we're going to do things a little bit different. I remember when I first got saved back in 1983. Started going to church and I just always sit in the front row and was taking notes. And I just wanted to soak in because I realized, wow. Now I know why I was so miserable in life. Even though I was a two-time world champion skateboarder, even though I traveled the world, even though I had the fame and on TV and all kinds of stuff going on, 
I was empty, and I gave it up because of that emptiness. But when I gave my life over to Jesus Christ, all of a sudden I was happy. I wanted to soak in everything that God had to offer. And after a little time, I don't know, maybe it was a few months, I, I volunteered to say, you know, I, I just want to get involved. I want to do something. And I started to usher and uh, uh, passing out the buckets and doing the envelopes and doing all that. But back then, they would do something because back in the, in the in, in Bibles, in the Old Testament, they would bring their offerings to the Lord. And there was times that we would have buckets where people would bring the offering. Or if we would pass the buckets, we would come up with the offering. And that song, when the Spirit of the Lord comes on my heart, and we would dance up and bring the offering to the front and just pray over the offering. Today we're going to do something a little bit different than we usually do. We usually just pass out the buckets. Today, maybe some of you say, well, I have nothing to give. Well, just grab an envelope and pop it into the bucket. But this is what I want to see. Say, Pastor, I'm going to feel uncomfortable. I think sometimes you just need to get out of yourself and get into God. I pray that maybe it challenges you maybe to be a little undignified. Well, I'm going to ask the ushers to come on up, and this is what we're going to do, and I'm going to kind of explain as we give to God this day. And like I said, I'd like each and every one of you, if you would participate. Pastor, I didn't want to go to the, oh, man, what am I going to, I'm going to be embarrassed. You know what? The eyes aren't going to be on you. David didn't say, oh, I'm going to be embarrassed bringing the ark out of I mean, just let me sneak, in, sneak into the palace. I don't want nobody to see me, but he was so excited. And just like you with your offering, you with your tithe, you with your giving, it's like you coming in and saying, God, I'm bringing you back into my life. Because I worked hard for these finances. I worked hard for the paycheck. And God, I'm trusting you. And I'm going to bring it into the offering. I'm going to give it in my tithe. I'm going to give it in my giving. What we're going to do is, uh, we're all going to stand up, first of all. And then, we're going to play that music again. Because it's just going to make us happy. And then, what we're going to do is, everybody on this side will exit the seat this way, down this aisle, drop it off, and go around to your seat that way. Everyone on this side... When you feel you want to come up, you're going to come up. You're going to come around this way, down into the aisle, drop it off, and uh, go around that way. Those of you on this side, you're going to come this way, down this aisle, either walk past that one or drop it into this one, either way, and then go down this way into your seat. But I don't want you to go like this. Give me an envelope. Let me see an envelope. Happy, happy, all right, I'll drop it in. I want you to, maybe, maybe you don't have rhythm. Maybe you're like Al. <laughs> he told, no, you, didn't you tell me you have no groove? He told me, he, don't be lying, you're in church. <laughs> but you could just, maybe a little... One of these? Nod. I don't, you can walk and just nod your head. Now, now, I was in the back when the song was going. I see even some of the, the, the older, mature uh, saints, they were going like this. Not you. You're a kid. <laughs> I saw some of them going like this. So I know you guys got rhythm. I know you got groove. I know you guys got swag. So we're going to let the song play, and I, please, uh, this is not to embarrass anyone. This is just for us to say, God, I want joy in my life. And you know what? I don't want to be a part of a church that is stuffy. I want to be a church that is alive. I want to be a church, part of a church that is happy to give, happy about life, happy about 
the future. So we're gonna we're gonna start the music, and then I'll tell you when you guys can go. I, actually, last service there's a lady who's here for the first time. She must have been in her 60s. She came dancing up on stage. Hey, go for it. Do you want to come across the stage and down? Yeah, you, whatever you. Uh, uh, let's just enjoy. So when, I'll tell you when to go, but we're gonna let me pray first. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this offering we're about to receive. Lord, we don't want to be so dignified and so structured that we miss out on the very presence and the Spirit of God. Because, Lord, we are excited to be called your children. And we want the joy of the Lord. We want that happiness in our lives that would give us the strength, Lord, to go another day, to live another week, another year. So today as we receive this offering, we pray, Lord, that every dime, dollar, quarter, penny would go help build the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, as I said, if, you're, if you have nothing to give, find something. Put a dime. To a if you don't have nothing, get an envelope and just drop it in so nobody knows whether you're giving or not. But let's trust God. Let's play that. And then I'll tell you when. I seem crazy what I'm about to say So sure she's here you can take Wait up we're not going yet Back up we're not going yet Hot air balloon that could go to space Wait You can dance but don't With come up air, gotta I get ready
I don't know about you, but I'm happy. I bet some of you have never been to church where they've had a dance party like that. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good. Father, I just thank you for allowing me, Lord, to pastor this church, a church that is just passionately in love with you. And Lord, we're not there yet, and we're always growing. We're learning how to love. We're learning how to give of ourselves for the betterment of someone else. We're learning about the joy of the Lord, that the joy is our strength happiness being free of who we are we as believers as Christians should be the most happiest people on the planet we just thank you Lord today before we dismiss I just want to make sure all of you are right with God some of you may have had a preconceived idea of what church is all about, what Christianity is all about, that it's, it's religious and it's, it's one of those things that, that you can't have fun and, and, and you need to always be at that place of, uh, of, of reverence. And yes, we need to reverence God, but at the same time, Jesus says, I've come to give you life and more abundantly. It doesn't mean all stuffy, but abundantly and happily. If you're in this place and you're not right with God, I want to give you that opportunity. Jesus says a, a man must be born again if he wants to see heaven, if he wants to go to heaven. God loved you so much when you were in your sin. He says, I'm going to send my son Jesus Christ to come and die that you can have eternal life in heaven. If that's you in this place, if you're watching online, I want to give you the opportunity. I want to pray with you that you can have the liberty because without Jesus Christ in your life, there's bondage and you're bound up. But that you would have that liberty to understand, wow, is this what it's about? It's about a relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth. That one that loves you passionately. So if that's you at the count of three, I want to see your hand. And, and that's all I want to do. And then we're going to pray a prayer. If you're watching online, I want you to push that button on there. And we want to pray with you. But this is about a life of of love, a life of happiness and joy. So if that's you at the count of three, I want to see your hand and I want to lead you in a prayer. One, two, three. Anybody, anybody in this place, let me see your hand go up. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Say, Pastor, I want to, I want to pray that prayer with you. Anybody online? Well, this is what we're going to do. One person raised their hand, and we're going to pray with them. I want all of you to pray with me as they invite the Lord into their hearts. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Repeat this after me. The Heavenly Father, I come to you today, and I surrender my heart. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. I thank you that you love me and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a hand. If you just want to raise your hand one more time, our ushers is going to place something in your hand real quick, and then all of you can have a seat just real quickly, and then we're going to be dismissing you. Just raise your hand. God bless you. They're, they're putting something in your hand, uh, just a little information about the decision that you made. And then my, my, my friend Al here, the one that has all the swag and all the groove. Stand up, Al. He's going to be out there under the blue awning, and uh, if if you have any questions, we'd love for you to, actually, no, no, we'd love for you to go see him and, and him and Lisa 
and they were going to be there just to answer any questions for you, just to, to help you about the, the decision that you made today. Now, we're going to be dismissing here in a moment, but all of you, you have the worship guide. We already received offering. Just a couple things. We have open house on Friday the 28th at 7 o'clock. It's uh, open house for anybody that's new, want to meet people, or want to see more about the church, or if you go to the church and just want uh, to connect on that night, everyone is invited to come be a part of that. You never know what's going to happen. And then also, the, the miracle of Easter. Easter season's coming up, and it's a great time to uh, invite somebody to church. First of all, on Sunday, April 13th, it's Palm Sunday. We have a special, The Last Supper narrative. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. We want to invite you for that. Then we have a Good Friday communion service. Then Easter Sunday, the miracle of Easter. We have a miracle offering. Lots of great things that are taking place. But take this with you. Uh, make it a point to come. Next week we're going to continue to talk about being happy. And uh, we just are, are so glad that you came. Uh, um, I didn't ask. Did I ask you who's new today? Anybody new for the very first time? Uh, any hands? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. We hope we didn't scare you off. But we hope that if you live in the area and you come back, check us out. If you're looking for a church or if you're visiting um, and you're just uh, visiting in uh, the desert, you come on a periodic basis. We hope that you become our alumni. Uh, those are the people that, that, see, that come during season or even in the summertime. And this is our church home away from home. So we, we love you and God bless you. I want everybody to stand on your feet. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. The back, we still have, I believe there's some coffee out there. And the coffee's free. Uh, the, the snacks you have to pay for. Uh, I think they're raising money for the children's ministry. But uh, it's all good. We love you. Um, if you want to go online, they'll, they'll be able to watch. Uh, we're going to put this uh, video. And maybe you have somebody that maybe want to look and say, this pastor is undignified. That's okay. Get pass it along on Facebook or whatever. And, and the message, if you want to see the message over again, uh, if you go to uh, you, is it, where do we, where's my wife, my lovely wife? Anyway, just follow us on Facebook and you'll find out the information. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Uh, when we close, I usually say, you know, and thank you, God, for, as we all love people to life. Now we're going to say we love people to life and be happy. Okay? Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the joy of the Lord that is in this place. I thank you, Lord, you have not called us to be stuffy. You have not called us to be uh, uh, cranky, caused us to be negative about life. But, Lord, in the midst of life, there's some goodness in there. And that we're going to have a good attitude. We're going to have the joy of the Lord because it's going to be our strength to continue on and be the light you've called us to be. I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you for Wednesday as we have a Wednesday night service. And next week, I thank you for those that are uh, uh, leaving this place today. I pray, Lord, that you equip them. And, Father God, as a church, we all say together that you would help us to love people to life and be happy.